Hello, I'm Nora and I'm delighted to be here to do the Ask Me Anything. Thank you so much for all your fantastic space questions. Okay, so let's get started. The first question comes from Ashleen. She's in Clamel and she's nine. So Ashleen asks, I would love to be an astronaut. How many years does it take to study to become one? What's your favorite part of the job? Great question, Ashleen. So the program that I'm doing is a citizen science program and I'm hoping to get a commercial space flight. So it's very different from the NASA astronauts and European Space Agency astronauts. And um, those astronauts who go through NASA and ESA would spend many, many years um, studying in college and becoming qualified in certain areas. And then they'd apply to NASA and ESA uh, to become an astronaut with them and then they do their training um, to go on their actual space mission for a number of years with uh, NASA and ESA once they get selected. Uh, the program that I do is, as I say, uh, very different because we're hoping to get the commercial uh, flight, the suborbital, the flight that, that goes up, it goes into space and then it comes back down. So it's a uh, very different, but hopefully by the time you're my age, there'll be lots of different uh, ways and means for you to hopefully get into space if you'd like to do that someday. We have a question here from Charlotte from Tralee and she's nine. Charlotte has asked if she can still become an astronaut if she has any broken bones. So uh, the short answer is yes, you can still become an astronaut even if you had a broken bone as a, a younger person. Um, I suppose the, the problem might be if you have had major surgery or anything like that and there's lasting damage and impact, that might be, be, be an issue. But generally speaking, if you have had a broken bone, um, it's, it's not going to stop you from becoming an astronaut. And the next question comes from Killian. He's in Limerick uh, and Killian is 12. He would like to know if you can wear glasses inside a spacesuit. So uh, yes, there has been astronauts who have worn uh, glasses inside uh, the spacesuit. Um, so as long as your vision is correctable, um, to what you need to be able to see it. Astronauts do um, sometimes wear glasses, yeah. And the next question comes from Danny uh, from Dublin and he's eight. And Danny has asked if I could bring one person to space, who would it be and why? That's a really difficult question, Danny. Um, I think I would bring my possum colleague, uh, Shauna Pandaya, who's uh, an amazing uh, lady. Uh, she's done loads of really uh, fantastic, uh, training courses and programs and she's a medical doctor um, uh, so she's a good colleague and friend of mine so I think uh, if I was to bring one person to space on a flight with me it would be Shauna. Uh, Luca from Galway who is 10 has asked why does your sense of smell uh, reduce when you're in space um, so it's really interesting if you think about life in space versus life here on earth it's very different um, in space you don't have the same gravity uh, that's on our bodies at the moment uh, as I sit here and when the astronaut gets to space you have this fluid inside your body that moves around um, because here on earth you have you know when you stand up uh, you have the gravity pulling things down towards your feet but that doesn't happen in space so you get this movement of fluid and what happens is the fluid often comes up your body um, and you get pressure then on your um, in your head um, and so that often causes the astronauts tastes to dull um, and can impact their sense of smell and also their eyes and um, so there's a lot of interesting things that happen uh, the body when you take um, gravity away and they look at that all the time in space so speaking of uh, fluids and uh, the impact of gravity Ben, who is from Dublin and he's five, has asked, um, he said he has read my book uh, and he's learned about some of the water tests that I've done as part of Possum and he would like to know how deep the water is. So um, we've got to do really some fantastic programs with Possum um, over in uh, America and in Canada and we used a special pool to do some water tests. Um, and that pool was actually um, 16 foot deep. Um, so if you think about me as a human, I'm about five foot four. So it's probably me and two of me uh, on top of me would be the, the depth of the pool. Um, and as I say, it's a special pool that they use to do um, special tests. And 
as part of that training, what we did is we got to use the, the spacesuit and we got to wear it in the water and, and test it out in different conditions and then give feedback in terms of what worked and what could be done differently. Um, so great experience. Dermot, who's seven and from Kilkenny, wants to know what does zero gravity actually feel like? Um, so as part of Project Possum, I got to do the parabolic flights, which are the flights that fly like this. And on the way down, you get to float weightless. Um, that's been my experience with um, floating uh, weightlessness. Uh, and it was absolutely amazing. It gives you a whole different perspective on I suppose the world as we know it, uh, how things grow, how things move, you know, even you think of liquid inside a bottle, um, behaves very, very differently when you put it in uh, weightlessness. Um, and so, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I would absolutely love to get up to space and have longer in that environment to do different tests and different experiments. But as a parabolic flight, it was fantastic. I want to do one in the bigger aircraft where you can do the Superman flying and that kind of thing. But the one that we did, it's, it's a smaller aircraft. So you get to experience it, but you're not tumbling around in a big uh, aircraft cab. Evine, who's eight and she's from Offaly, wants to know what it's like to work in Project Possum. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I have to say it's been a really, really great experience so far. We've got to work with ex-NASA astronaut trainers and do uh, really some fantastic programs about spacesuits and microgravity. Um, and yeah, so it's it's been a very hands-on program, which meant, you know, you, you really get in there and you're learning the physical side of what it actually takes to get to space. And if any of you would like to know more about Project Possum, you can get your parents uh, or your teacher to search for it online. And this next question is from Shane. He's in Galway and he's five. And Shane has asked, what kind of food uh, do you eat in space? And um, if you think about going to space, it's kind of like going on a very long camping trip. And um, so the astronauts living on the International Space Station um, would very much plan, would they'd have planned foods and um, they'd have a stock of food that would last them um, a few months. Um, so if you think about it, if you were going on a long camping trip, a long duration camping trip for four or six months, what types of food would you bring? Well, you'd want tinned foods, you'd want um, dried foods, you'd want foods that don't go off quickly. Um, so that's the type of foods that they, they bring and it's very well planned out in terms of calories and intake and nutrition um, and all the things that they need to keep them um, healthy. And Shane's brother, Darren, who's eight, has asked, what's the fastest speed the rocket uh, travels at? And um, so it really depends where the rocket is going. Uh, but if you take, for example, the International Space Station, which is orbiting, it's going around the Earth um, as we speak, um, that's actually traveling at 17,500 miles per hour, which is really, really, really fast. So in order for the rocket to catch the International Space Station and dock, that means attach with it, it has to get up to the same speed, so about 17,500 miles per hour um, to connect with the space station. So Gavin, who's 10, has asked, do your ears pop on the way to space? Um, so the short answer is no. Um, they pop on the aircraft because there's a pressure that causes that, pressure difference that causes that. Um, but that doesn't happen uh, typically in the spacecraft. Aaron, who is eight, and he's from Port Marnock, has asked, can you crack an egg in space? Um, so if you think about it, if you crack an egg here on Earth, what happens? Well, you crack it and the egg comes out and it falls into the pan or wherever you put it. But um, if you think about space, um, it's a very different environment and everything floats. So uh, they have actually tested this on a parabolic flight, so the weightless flight, uh, that you can do short duration. You get about 15 seconds of weightlessness. Um, and they tested this on one of these flights to see what would happen to the egg if you crack it without the, the same gravity you have here on Earth. Um, so what happened is when they cracked the egg, um, the egg actually stayed inside the shell because the gravity wasn't there to pull it out. Um, so what they had to do is they actually had to scoop the egg out of the shell um, to get it to come out uh, while it was in that weightless environment. Um, so it certainly gives you something to think about in terms of cooking and uh, simple operations in space are very, very different than uh, here on Earth. But uh, great question. 
Okay, so the first part of the questions were really about uh, training to get to space and uh, also about Project Possum. Um, and so the next part we're going to move on to is more general space questions, all about space. So, Julie, who is in Dublin and she's four, has asked, who was the first person to bring a space station up to space? Uh, did they bring it all in one piece or did they build it uh, up there? So, great question. Uh, so, the first, I suppose, what it's called is a module. It's like a, it's like a block. The first piece of the uh, space station to go up to space was a cargo vehicle. Um, so, that means there was no people in there. It was called Zarya. It was a Russian component and Zarya actually means sunrise. And um, that was sent up to the space, that was sent up to space uh, as the start of the International Space Station in 1998. Um, and I suppose more recently they've been constantly adding to the space station over the years. So they've pieced it together like a like Lego. And um, so they get all of the pieces up to space and then they build it together and um, to have this big, big uh, structure, this big space station up there. And uh, the first, so you asked about the first person up there. Um, so the first crew uh, launched to the space station in the year 2000. Um, so very interestingly, uh, this year in November, we'll be celebrating 20 years of uh, uninterrupted human presence in space. So I hope we can all have a space party and celebrate that there's been continuous um, you know, humans in space for the last uh, 20 years. The next question comes from Ben. He is nine and he's in Luxembourg. And he has asked, do I think there are other things living in space? Uh, so I often get asked this question. I do think uh, there is some other form of life um, out there in our universe. I think it's a vast, vast universe that we live in. And to finish, the most popular question of all, which is something I always get asked, uh, this has actually been asked by a few different people. Uh, Noah, aged five, from Kerry. Uh, Claire, aged nine, from Dublin. And Cody, who's 10, and he's in North Strand. And they've all asked, who, how do you go to the toilet in space? Uh, this seems to be a very popular question. Um, so, uh, you know, as things float in space, uh, simple things, like we go to the toilet here on Earth, is very different uh, up on the space station. So what they have is they have um, two uh, separate things, one for your pee and one for your poo. Um, so if you think about um, going for a pee in space, what they have is they have a tube uh, and the tube sucks the pee in. So they have to pee into the tube, they have to have the suction on so that the pee uh, is sucked into the tube and it doesn't float everywhere, which would be very gross. Um, and then for the uh, number two, um, they have a little, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a seat, but if you think about space, you don't really sit, uh, but you have to, you know, get over the seat uh, so you can uh, get your poo into the bag. Um, and like that, uh, they have a suction that uh, pulls it down uh, into the bag. Um, and out of courtesy, what they do is they change that bag for the next astronaut who's uh, coming in to use the toilet. Uh, so again, great questions. I always get asked that uh, toilet in space question, um, but I think, think it gives a bit of a perspective on how different it is uh, to live in space compared to living uh, here on Earth. So I'd like to say a huge thanks for all your fantastic questions. Um, it's been great uh, hearing them and great being able to answer them all. Uh, I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and the very best of luck with your projects. We would love to hear about them. So please do let us know uh, how you're getting on. And if you have any more space questions, feel free to share them.